The bigs are eating. They're eating good. Mm, um, 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 um. Hey, it's Chris. The best of March. Well, the highs and lows of March because we got some stuff to talk about. Crowdfunding, retail, what got played from yours truly. Oh yeah, all of it in a nutshell, in the format you love or slightly tolerate, but somehow we're still watching. Yeah, that's right. Let's go. Are you ready? Are you ready? Thump, thump. Just after WrestleMania weekend, I'm filming this. So that is what we've got on board for this video today. So let's just go right into it, right? Crowdfunding. Most interesting, most discussion-based crowdfunding side of things, right? My my biggest winner, biggest winner right now, up here. Oh, oof. Bailed fate, in case you can't tell. I mean, kind of really dark, kind of hard to see, you know, camera, okay. Veiled fate on the back there. Okay, anyway. Uh, but yeah, that expansion actually makes the game so much better for me. So much better. Like, I, I said it in my review, again, like, I always feel like when I put those videos out where I'm like, whoa, those are good. People are like, he's shilling again. Ignore him. Block. Or maybe subscribe. Anyway, but this is really a good expansion, folks. It's... It's a good expansion. You know, it's not going to change your mind, though. And that's probably the biggest thing, right? It's not going to change your mind if you're not a fan of Veiled Fate and the deduction-esque aspects of it, of multi-playing characters in the sense that you can control anybody's character and you never quite know who's who. And, yeah, you can get a little bit of that. And if you're not smart, you're going to get yourself caught. But I think it gives you ways to not get caught. Your asymmetric win condition is just all of a sudden that. It's not just be at the top of the mountain, it's be at this portion of the mountain or have you in front of this portion of the mountain but behind another AI character. And I think it gives a huge dynamic change and just more ways of mitigating and sometimes those deduction-esque ways that I'm not always a huge fan of, right? Or that just kind of fall flat. And I think this helps it not fall as flat if you're, you know, in my Shoes, essentially, I guess is what I'm saying. So, yeah, I mean, you're going to pay a premium for this. That's the biggest problem with it. You know, it's expensive. And if you don't have a group for it in the first place, then it's not going to change your mind. It's not going to give you extra people to play with around the table. Because realistically, I mean, you're looking at four or five, I would make the argument. It's not going to be as good at two or three. You know, I don't want to play this game with seven, you know, or more. I, no, no. And so that four or five is definitely the sweet spot. So if you got that, again, I say this as someone who doesn't do a lot of these games, any of these five plus player count games. So take that for what you will as a whole, as the first one up here. Second one we're gonna talk about, again, I don't really know. I don't really know. I didn't pledge during the campaign. I pseudo regret and pseudo don't regret because my track record recently as I found out with a couple games that I will be talking about in short order, small boxes that I am sort of sighing on. We'll get there probably later in this month, but of things that I just thought I was going to like and didn't like and thought I was going to like, and I thought that were going to be better. And so I passed on Roth from chip theory. I have a feeling that I could go either way with the late pledge at this point. And to be frank with you, I was a little put off when I highlighted it, the fact that Game Nerds was selling the gameplay all in for the same price during the freaking campaign, not even after the campaign. And now I think what, Card House um, has it, you know, slightly higher priced as well after the campaign. So I just look at it and I go, mm, you know, truth be told, I read the rule book, but I didn't get the flow. And so I'm gonna have to watch a video or two, but I just don't feel confident now, all of a sudden, you know, you've got a couple hits, you've got a couple misses. I just got my butt kicked in Star Wars Unlimited tonight, trying out a new Han Solo deck. Just got absolutely destroyed by a Kernick deck like two times in a row, and then finally eked out a win in the third one. So I'm like, oh, maybe I can actually not be horrible at this, right? And I feel like that way sometimes with my crowdfunding picks. Even as someone who knows what they like, I sometimes get fooled by aesthetic or think versus actuality, right? And so as much as I play and as much as I have around me, I'm still sometimes falling flat on my face. So it's not just you, you know, it sometimes feels like that, right? You see these Reddit threads that are like, which one is the one that you got burned by the most on crowdfunding? And you got all these lists of things and people, you're just like, I didn't get that, I didn't get that. You know what? 
you don't have to get burned massively. I think we always think like, oh yeah, I bought this $300 game and it just, you know, completely didn't work. Like how many $50 games do you have like that? How many $30 games do you have like that? How many just $100 games, you know? Start looking at the, not the biggest, you know, right? Start looking at not the biggest, but the sum total of some of the smaller ones because it adds up just as quick or faster. So that's not a pleasant experience. Um, so I'm just kind of going, okay, yeah, right. I just don't, so I'm just kind of going, yeah, you know, I just, something hesitated and I just couldn't pull the trigger on it. I didn't love it. Now, will that change when I reread the rule book, watch a couple of videos? It may, truth be told, right? I'm not adverse to late backing. In fact, I'd say late backing is better than backing during most campaigns. <gasps> Did one of the biggest crowdfunding talkers on the internet just say that out loud? I said the quiet part out loud. Reference to a different video. But that's where my head is at with that. So that was second up this month. And then third up, again, I just had mixed feelings about it. I went in the same way with Etherstone from uh, Thunderglyph. And I said, I don't know right? There's another similar game with an engine build style, head-to-head, -head, take that slightly Fantasy Realms-esque. Not saying Aetherstone's Fantasy Realm-esque, but a different game that I just got. That just, again, it got bogged down by stuff. Minutia. Overhead. Explanation. And, again, it's, it's one of those that I'm going to look heavily at now post-campaign, more so probably than I did even since the roundup, because, to be frank, I wasn't overly impressed when I did it on the roundup, and then it just kind of fell off my radar. Just fell off my radar, to be completely honest, folks. I, you know, I'm doing 15 of these a week. And it's hard to, you know, sometimes remember what is ending when. It's easy to know when stuff is launching, but it's not always easy to know when it's quite going to end because I, I just don't do it that way in my head, right? So I kind of just... Actually, you know, similarly. <laughs> Truth be told here, similarly. Um, I just had that happen with Cascadia. <laughs> rolling hills and rolling rivers. I meant to back that, and then I just totally forgot. Whoops. So I'm going to go light back that one, actually, probably after filming this video, because um, I don't feel like I need it. I don't feel like I'm super, like, super high on it. But I look at it as a game of lighter Cascadia that my wife will play a ton with me, because she always asks when I get rid of those rolling rights. Like, I, I play them with her, and none have really struck my fancy lately. Draft and Write Records, which is sitting uh, over there, right behind the camera. Uh, I just moved it right before the video, actually. Uh, that's probably the closest one that I've really enjoyed the most over the last year. Although I haven't played, truth be told, two of my print and plays from 2023. Uh, Waypoints from Postmark Games, as well as their previous Aqua. And then I backed Sunshine City, too. So I have like three of those print and plays. I just need to get some more, you know, is this actually good? Because if it is, maybe I'll pass on Cascadia, because... All three of those combined cost less than Cascadia combo right now as a whole. So that's the other thing with Cascadia combo, right? Like I look at it and now I can't get it out of my head too with Cascadia Landmarks where they bundled Cascadia Landmarks, the five and six player expansion with the extra gameplay content. And I looked at that and I said, I don't want them both. And that's what I wonder about this one. It almost feels like, why didn't you just put it all in one box? Why are you making it two separate boxes to make people FOMO on one box? Like, like, that's where my head goes. And I give Flat Out Games a really good, you know, overall vibe. I give them overall good intentions, right? But again, as a consumer, right, just as a pure consumer, you know, why not put that in one box, have less overhead duplicative nature of both of them for 25 and not have two separate boxes that I'm inevitably going to combine in the first place that, again, just like the Aeon's Ends, where you've got this duplicative core cards, grave hold, you know, base thing, and a couple of the just usuals. Like, got like four copies of those now, five copies of those now. And I don't want it to start happening with my rolling rights. And when are rolling rights going to start doing more of the laminated stuff? I mean, that's the whole reason to print and play nowadays, anyway, in the first place, right? Because nobody does dry erase. They do pencil with like 50, 60 sheets that you're never going to go through anyway. Sometimes they're double-sided, sometimes they're not. You know what I'm talking about. Like just a good laminated board in there. You know, let me buy my own marker. Because then that'll determine how well I, how, how much I play it or not, right? More than anything else. But that's putting some control in consumers' hands. And, you know, consumers like myself are idiots, so maybe I shouldn't have control. I don't know. 
but that's where my head goes with this sort of stuff. So I'm going to be looking at that very heavily as well from that side of things. Uh, the other two that were on my radar that I have copies of that video shortly before or after this reign of Hades and Requiem of the Downfall of Magic, cooperative and competitive, uh, just different vibes as a whole, both doing really well in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, Ludus Magnus, as well as Legend Crafters. So those, and then the only other one that really kind of caught my eye, again, I can't do Flashpoint uh, Legacy of Flame, will not do Legacy on crowdfunding. You can't tell me that there is enough mechanical difference. You can't promise me it. I won't argue the point that, you know, Clank Legacy 2 Acquisitions Incorporated 2, right, is going to be an absolute tr killer, tremendous game. But just like with almost any other legacy game that's come on crowdfunding, because it's legacy by the nature of it, they either can't reveal stuff or you can't guarantee me it's going to be that unique and, and fitting my play style. Not even that it's going to be a good game, right? You can't guarantee me it's going to fit. And there's inevitable price drop off almost ubiquitously across the board when it goes to retail as well then. So I have no real incentive from a consumer apart from FOMO or apart from putting a video out as a influencer, right? But how much do I actually influence? So that was on my radar. Uh, Brotherwise, super bosses monster, right? Super bosses monster, super boss monster. Again, with a revamped market, a few tweaks to the rules, I could see this being a great family kid style game. We were just playing, um, and this maybe goes into the play counts of end of March, early April, of one of my games I reviewed last month as well. Courtesans from Pandasaurus Ketchup Games, right? The Oriflam Light. You probably didn't watch it. It was a super light video, and I uh, had some light style games, but my kids love it. Absolutely love it. Two or three times in a row. You know, I think in April we played it five times already, and I'm filming this in the first week of April. So, you know, that stuff hits the table, gets the kids involved, gets them more interested, folks. You can't discount that as a whole. Last up, I mean, we'll ignore River Valley Glassworks, which is Azul of a different flavor, again, on the family style light side of things. But we're going to talk a minute before about AEG's Ready, Set, Bet, the High Roller Edition. And again, I look at this and I go, that that's awesome. That game is so well thought of. But the point I didn't mention with Roth, which I hammered home a couple times in other videos too, just like I'm gonna hammer it home with Ready, Set, Bet here is, man, that is a lot of money for one game being deluxified, folks. It is. And again, hypocrite speaking here, you know, as I've got Primal, uh, the token uh, standee version of things that could just be that instead of miniatures, deluxified the hell out of it, increased the price from that aspect. But I'm choosing to pick on, you know, Ready, Set, Bet and Roth instead. So pick your poison, pick your hypocrite this week. And I just have a tough time. Like if you could tell me that, and again, maybe this is a more apt comparison, right? The Foundations of Metropolis is going to be how much of a tenth of a price of Foundations of Rome. Because Foundations of Metropolis is supposed to be basically the cardboard version of Fountains of Foundations of Rome that we were promised. Is that going to be price differential wise, you know, comparable? You know, with the non-deluxified version, you know, here, and the deluxified version, whoa, up here, right? Someone selling their Foundations of Rome Pledge for like $400 today on Facebook. People say it's a great game. You know what? It's a great game for somebody else to own, right? Just like Kingdom Death Monster. I'm selling mine, by the way. Anyone want to buy it? Anyway, uh, but that's kind of where my head goes with Roth, too. Like, Roth better be one of my favorite games. Like, if Foundations of Rome is one of your favorite games, if Castles of Burgundy is one of your favorite games, and you can get it played, and you can get it to the table, and you can have the setup teardown issues that it inevitably brings, and you're okay with that, well, you know, awesome, fantastic. But if you don't know, and you're going in blind with any of those, I mean, I feel like that's the way with Roth right now. Unless you absolutely know you're in love with Roth, I mean, you know, it's a dangerous proposition to buy an $80 game at $250, right? Tell me I'm wrong in the comment section. I dare you. If you don't know that you love it and you're spending three times the actual gameplay amount to find out that, I'm sorry. I can't support that practice. And that's the problem with crowdfunding in general right now is that's the catch-all way right now to get people to back. It's deluxify the freaking hell out of it and force them to FOMO on, I might love this game and so I might need the shiny tokens, right? I might need the extra miniatures. You know, I'm looking at Dead Keep and someone was like, you know, in the comment section, Dead Keep's going to have standees at retail or, or expansions are, or whatever the exclusive content is. And I was like, well, you know what? You know, hashtag Team Standee Liege. 
So any interest in that just completely went out the window. Mm -hmm. Right? So I don't view that as necessarily a downgrade. There are very few things in our hobby that actually need deluxifications. I play a lot of the Japanese games too that are minimalistic and spoilers here. They work just as well non-deluxified with wooden cubes and chits and tokens that aren't screen printed, dual layered, or colors blasting all over the place. I know, I'm being a little bit facetious because I, I like it too. Don't get me wrong. I like it too. But in terms of our hobby as a whole, you know, someone, again, I disagreed with in the comment section the other day. They're like, the bubble's going to burst, baby. Bubble is about to burst. Golden age of board gaming is over. Boom. Pop. Boom. I was like, no, it's not. But how much longer can the deluxifications go? And, and the problem is you got plenty of disposable income to go around. And you got new people, you know, jutting in every time. Each time that stuff comes out. So why I say on the roundups, crowdfunding roundups, you know, pick and choose. Pick and choose. I have nothing wrong with supporting an indie publisher that might not get made elsewhere if you're paying a premium for it. But how much, as a consumer, how much premium are you willing to pay? Because inevitably, right, it's a business. It's trying to sell you something. It's not always looking out for consumer-wise practices first. That's the dichotomy and the split that I find myself in trying to balance out on a, you know, week by week basis, because some of the stuff I just don't like, but I'm also not going to bash a company for putting out the product that they want to do in the first place as well. Right. It may not be for me, but again, other people, I'm not going to tell you how to spend your own money. I'm just going to tell you my opinions on my thoughts on things, which gets me inevitably in trouble. So anyway, uh, yeah, we talked enough about crowdfunding. And so let's go over to my tops played of the month. Um, well, starting off my run of Star Wars Unlimited Sparks of Rebellion. Been hitting it hard. Been hitting it hard in April, uh, but it started in March, and I'm really liking it. I'm not good at it, folks. I'm not good. I'm about 25 plays in at this point of me filming it, and I'm just not good. I, I don't quite get some of the nuanced mechanisms. Some of the leaders, like Han and Krennic, like, I just don't... I guess I'm a little bit risk averse. And so I think that's ultimately why some of the leaders aren't going to be as good for me. I'm just risk averse and uh, I'm just not a good gambler. Like I realized that with Hans deck. So I just really like it though. I really like it. And so the question is, could you just play it online and never buy into the stuff versus buy into it and make like, if I could make like four or five decks here for not an insane amount, because I mean, a lot of these decks, even some of the cheaper ones, I mean, you know, like the deck I just played online tonight, right? It's got three Han Solos in it. It's got three Millennium Falcons. It's got two Leias. It's got three, two or three Chewbaccas, right? Other decks, you know, you got three Bobas. You got three Vaders in the in the Vader deck or the Squash deck. You know, you've got a couple of the cheaper decks on a whole, and you don't need to meta, you know, because I'll make the other argument that now that it's been out for a couple of weeks, people are really exploring the alternatives to just the Boba Sabine meta that sort of was announced as the be all end all of things at the beginning and if you're not understanding any of what i'm saying that's okay uh you can skip to the next game but um it's gonna be really interesting to see especially with the shadows of the galaxy um already leaking out with grogu and mandalorian and moff gideon and what's coming there it's going to completely toss up the meta just absolutely and utterly trash it and so i'm intrigued to see and i personally hope that as i said in one of my videos from uh a week or two ago that we don't get all the cards like i personally don't think we need all the cards beforehand i think you go in with some mystery and you go in with some old school style i don't know what's out there and i wish that they would do that but it's harder to drum up hype if you're ffg too so ffg please return my emails <laughs> i want to talk about your product more um i'm gonna keep emailing you though so I can be pesty in a very nice, positive way. Okay, so that's first up. Second up, uh, let's just go straight to, well, I mentioned Cortisons, right? I mentioned it a minute ago. Uh, my kids love it. My kids absolutely love it. I got the eight-year-old playing it. He's requested it a couple times. Finally, after the 10-year-old got out of his temper tantrum phase of a day or two, he played it now and loves it as well. So we can play it four-player, and the three-year-old sits there, and he watches, and it's color matching, and it's, it's cool. It's take that, it's pile on, it's, you know, destroy dad because right? Two of the last three games, I ended up either with single digits or negative points. 
yeah, it's just dump on dad game is essentially what it is. But my kids are having fun, so I can't can't argue. And then you know what? Mindbug. Mindbug. Um, we talked about Mindbug. I did the review of it. The next upcoming campaign, uh, the Battlefruit Kingdoms. I'm gonna I always mess that name up. I, I just think that's a highly underrated game. I first played it and I didn't see it's just sitting right here. Sitting right here. I I played it the first time or two around and I just was underwhelmed and then it's one of those games I went back to and I was like how oh, this actually is really clever and it takes out some of the overhead you know I was just learning another crowdfunding uh asymmetric card laying head-to-head -head dueler tonight and you know it's it's sometimes nice just to have this just I'm just gonna say whip it out but that's a whole nother phrasing issue so it's just nice to be able to get this to the table really easily some nights. And I really like this, and I love the compact nature of it, and it's super highly tactical, and I really do feel like the better player wins most of the time. So I can't argue that this is a game that has uh, done really well, under uh, underappreciated, but also surpassed expectations as a whole. So that one, talked about in my review as well, from this past month, my review of Cat Blues and Bebop from Bitewing, which should be probably live at the time of you guys seeing this. And I really like Bebop. Cat Blues is a great game because it's overall probably gonna be easier to get to the tables. It's a trick-taking Jin Rummy Scout style go fish. But, you know, again, they say adaptability when you can only play one round instead of three to make it, you know, shorter time frame because that's the big problem with trick takers now. You have to play like 13 hands of, you know, 17 rounds each. And then by the time you do that, you know, you've played for three hours and you're going, how did this light trick taker take that long? And Cat Blues kind of redoes that and it's a, you know, revision of 1998, you know, game originally from Kinesia. So uh, then Bebop, uh, you know, personally, you know, if you, if you put me in a perfect situation of what game I'd like to play, I'd like to play Bebop more, to be frank. It gives me Babylonia-esque vibes. The, the scoring is a little bit uh, kind of counterintuitive, unintuitive, I would dare say, with some of the groupings and some of the, the token grabbing and matching, especially at the end game. But once you understand it, um, it, it works. It works really well. I would just be worried that because, again, you know, this is my own bias and I'm a little biased towards that type of game anyway. There's not as much control and understanding as, say, its equivalents of Blue Lagoon or Babylonia-esque or even Cascadero from Bitewing from last year. And so that would be my only trepidation that sometimes it's not going to be as easy for you to have the control that you can see in other games with this one as well. It's a little bit more chaotic. But I like the randomness, I like the three symbols, and I like the market play that you are allowed. Three chairs up to that you can have out there in the first place, and then how you mitigate the dice in terms of where you put them and how you use the ones that are available to you. So I think that that game is going to be highly, highly overlooked, but I'll put my two cents in from that side of things. And then, truth be told, biggest surprise of the month, one of the biggest surprises of the year, uh, one of the other biggest surprises of the year will probably be out uh, earlier than this in this month, but um, as in the video, but actually it was played in April. So that'll be talked about more extensively next month, obviously, uh, is a game that is currently just finishing up on crowdfunding, hopefully at the time of me airing this, Acornism. I talked about this on the Roundup. Japanese designer Kotari, uh, publisher Phantom Lab. It's just a two-player, well, three to four, but it's a two-player tile laying game. And you have these little domino tiles. One side has an animal with a number on it. The other side has a number of acorns. And you just have to match it so you don't have two sides touching each other. So eventually you have four tiles, squares of acorns surrounding one animal. But you can't ever place it unless the animal either has less than or exactly equal to the number of acorns. And so once it gets the four sides surrounded with that number, whoever put the last one on puts their token on it. And when you fill up this King Domino-esque 8x8 grid in a clever, you know, dynamic way of spacing them so they're not all compact, so you can sort of edge people out... Um, it's fantastic. I wouldn't want to play it with three or four. Again, it's like an abstract with three or four. You don't play abstracts with three or four. But with two players, this is probably one of my biggest surprises so far of 2024, right? This, to be mentioned, other game that is probably already video review out, One Hit Heroes, and then Star Wars Unlimited, right? Those right now are stand out like I'm 
fantastically blown away by what they're putting out there. Again, not to say that any of these other ones that I talked about, like Bebop or Veiled Fate, weren't like fabulous, but like you go in there and you go, Veiled Fate's gonna be good. Mindbug, I knew it was gonna be good. I was expecting good things from Bebop, you know, but with one hit heroes, I don't know, it came out of nowhere for me. Acornism, man, it's a little Japanese. Whoa, right? Star Wars Unlimited, just to catch, hey, whoa, I'm really liking this, right? Like that is what you do this hobby for. And that's why this was so intriguing to me as a whole. And so if it's still funding, hopefully it is at the time of me airing this, you guys can go check it out and back it as well. Biggest news of the month? I mean, we sort of alluded to it, talked about it earlier, right? The Simon and the Awakened Realms. I mean, they continue to dominate things and we're just gonna see where things go, right? Now that I was wrong, throw myself on the sword there. You guys let me know in the comment section because of course, you know, the day after I put my news video out saying, I think DC United's gonna launch in April, they're like, hey, we're launching in July. That, as well as Dead Keep, as well as the upcoming God of War, and you know, again, we'll get sidetracked here, but Dead Keep, right? I am not a big fan of the straight up pre-order on GameFound. I'm just not, you know, and that's okay. It's a business model, it's a business decision. I'm sure it was extensively part of the conversation when they signed the whatever agreement, right? Like, that's what I'd like to know. When they made this press release, right? Like, what does they actually mean? There were no meaningful details out there. It's just like, okay, we signed a deal. Congratulations. But transparency for us, no. And again, not that I'm expecting them to, right? But as a consumer, as a buyer of your product, at some point, it'd be nice to know a little bit of something something, right? Like, why did they really come over? Because CMOM was getting their millions. And so what was the incentive from Awakened Realms? Was it that you can just host your stuff on our website and get traction that way like you can't on Kickstarter? Was it something to do with how many projects going simultaneously? Was it something else? Are they getting a better fee negotiated because they're, you know, right? The rich, the big, the powerful, especially in capitalism, right? The rules aren't all the same for everybody. I don't know. It's intriguing. It's curious. Just purely unbasisly speculating. So don't take me for any of that seriously. But it's just a thought thing that goes through my head when I'm looking at that as a whole. So... Uh, the other more interesting news, I was hoping to get some more details of the Res Arcana expansion that's supposedly supposed to be coming out soon. So hopefully we'll get something along those lines soon from that side of things. Then we also saw, well, obviously at retail release, like I mentioned, Star Wars Unlimited Spark Rebellion. That is by far and away the clear winner. And then the Awakened Realms style of things with a feast with the new Cyberpunk from Go On Board as a cooperative game. Super intrigued by that. Sky Tier Horde is getting a campaign system. Mindbug, which we already hit on. Odolin from Dragori Games, which is, you know, the makers of Teneris Adventures and Arena, the contest. All those are big stuff. Big stuff. And so what are we going to see? And when for some of them as well? You know, I like the announcements. I like the big but again, that kind of doesn't address the other thing in the room that kind of gets ignored is, you know, all the game pump projects that don't get that. Because some of those are still really having trouble getting traction from the smaller ones. Um, the bigs are getting theirs, right? The bigs are eating. They're eating good. Mm, um, 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 um. But the, the small ones, I'm not, not quite sure how that's going. And I'm sure it's going fine, right? The statistics will bear it out and I'm just an idiot and I'm wrong. So, uh, and then at the end, of, you know, we got Grim Coven, and that was a big, big win, because also, just prior to me filming this, they got their first update, so we got to see some cool characters. I'm excited about that one. Awaken Realms. So, um, hopefully, we'll see more of that soon. And something about more details regarding the Riven Veil, vale, uh, the Shadowborn Games sequel standalone set in Arthurian legend of area control. The... Uh, that was about it. That's the month. That is March, freaking March, in a nutshell. And, you know, we actually got Primal Awakening, right? We got Primal Awakening sitting right here. I did my unboxing and um, hopefully having a review out. I don't know if we're going to have a review out in April. It's too massive. It's too massive. I Actually, I've been swamped. 
Like uh, this past week, I've literally gotten at least one box in the mail every single day. I think my wife is getting mad. Um, and there were a couple days where we got two. I sold a few bigger items though, but again, gonna try and sell a couple other bigger items. Need to sell some smaller items too though. Maybe I'm gonna do something local. Just like garage sale once the weather gets warm, come and buy any of these that are 40 to $50 at retail for 20, right? And just say, peace out, see you later, clear it out, go. I don't know. That's all I got. That's the month in a nutshell as a whole. We hit 10K. I don't know where we're going. We're not going to 20K fast though, because uh, you know, if there's there's one thing I'm not, I'm not fast. I'm I'm slow. <laughs> oh, I set myself up for that one. I, and I went with it. I thought about it and I said it anyway. That's what you get on this channel. So that's all I got. Have a great freaking day. Stay classy in the comments, and uh, let me know what you want to see. Coffee soon. Coffee soon. Coffee, coffee, coffee. I always think, like, Kofi because there's a wrestler named Kofi Kingston, and he spells it the same way as, as Kofi or coffee. I always want to say Kofi, but, you know, it's coffee. Anyway, I'm going to sound like an idiot here rambling about probably mispronouncing how to pronounce it correctly here at the end. That's all I got. See you around. The bigs are eating. They're eating good. Mmm. 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 M